This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. The Z16 that I just reviewed is an extremely fast laptop paired with Intel's 10 nanometer 55 watt chips. But in that review, you guys said that even though it doesn't really compare with the M1 Air, you guys still wanna see how it stacks up, especially when we go ahead and unplug the cable, how they can perform. So today, let's go ahead and do that. So this is an extremely unfair comparison. And obviously on one end, we have a $2,700 machine. And on the other end, we have a machine that's uh, MSRP at a thousand bucks, but you can pick it up for a lot lower. The lowest I've seen is 850. On one end, this thing, the fans are spinning up right now. And we're gonna talk about that, just sitting here plugged in. And then we have a completely fanless machine. We also have 32 gigs of ultra fast RAM compared to just eight gigs. And then we have four high performance cores compared to eight high performance cores and a dedicated graphics card compared to the built in uh, seven core, in this case, the base model M1 graphics chip. So this is completely, shouldn't be happening, but we're doing it for you guys. You guys wanna see it. As we're waiting for the M1X chips, we will just do this. And then when that comes out, maybe we'll have to revisit this. And by the way, as you guys see, we have brand new merch available with this M1X design with the circuitry coming through that Vadim made. So if you guys wanna get one of these, you guys wanna support the channel, go ahead and check it out down below. Let's start out with Geekbench. I'm gonna go ahead and click run. As you guys could see, we have that i7-11800H processor. We have 18 cores at 10 nanometers that run up to 4.6 gigahertz, whereas the M1 goes up to 3.2, so lower frequency. Looks like the M1 finished this maybe about 20 seconds or so quicker. Let's see the scores on here. Wow, okay, this is actually better than I got before for my review. As you guys see, as far as multi-core, we have 8,081 compared to 7,620. Still fairly close, but the Intel processor does win. And as far as single core, we're looking at 1567 compared to 1720. That means that the Z16 is about 6% faster in terms of multi-core, but the M1 is 9% faster in terms of single core performance. Now, this is actually the closest that I've seen a different machine be to an M1 processor. Now, the crazy thing is it took Intel going to 10 nanometers and having a higher wattage processor, much higher, in order to pull this off. But now what I wanna do is unplug this, and we're gonna run this test one more time. Of course, the MacBook Air, it was unplugged the whole time. So let's see what performance we get when we don't have that extra power. And as we're waiting for this to finish, let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can build a great looking website like we did with literally no way making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else. You just simply choose a template and customize blocks of text and images and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and our been running flawlessly for over three years, bringing in tons of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash maxtech or by using our custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, we have our results and it looks like the multi-core score dropped and now it's pretty much identical. It went from over 8,000 and we basically have a difference of four points which is negligible, it's identical. And that's actually good. I've seen a lot of these Intel laptops where the performance drops significantly when you unplug it. Now on the single core side, now instead of having a difference of about 9%, we have a 20% difference in performance. Now next, I'm gonna go to Speedometer 2.0. This is a web browsing benchmark. As you guys know, the M1s are extremely responsive because of that single core performance, opening apps, using Finder, using web browser, it's incredibly quick, so let's see what we get. Here we go. We do have a pretty significant difference. Now, this thing's at basically 160 compared to 220. That's a difference of about 38%. Not to say that this Intel machine is slow. It's still very snappy. But when we had it plugged in, it actually scored 190, which was by far the fastest I've seen in any machine other than an M1. Now, before we bust out the thermal camera and do a thermal throttling test, 
let's go ahead and talk about graphics performance. Obviously with the Z16, we have that RTX 3060 graphics card. It is a beast. And then on the M1, we have Apple's slowest ever Apple Silicon graphics that they're ever gonna make. This is the seven core base model. So let's go ahead here. I'm gonna switch over to CUDA from OpenCL. And then we're gonna use Metal on the M1. And let's see how our graphics cards perform. All right, guys. Well, this is a huge difference. We have 94,000 compared to 19,000. That is literally five times the graphics performance. Pretty significant. Now, of course, when we go and we unplug the laptop, I'm gonna go ahead and run that again. It is gonna go down, but surprisingly, it doesn't go down that much. Here we go. It looks like we have a difference of about 12, 13%. That is what we had as far as loss when we unplugged. Now that is actually really impressive because that chip, the graphic chip in here uses a lot of wattage. And in previous laptops, we actually saw massive drops with the Quadro P5000. I think it went all the way from like 90 something thousand down to about 35. It was insane. But this performance is still really good. Now, my main question is when we compare, when we take this performance and we add in the CPU performance, and we actually do real world work, will we still maintain this level of performance or are both of those things running at the same time gonna throttle it much more? We will see in just a second. But next, let's go ahead and talk about thermal throttling and CPU performance. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Cinebench and I mentioned that this is a ultra fast laptop but with that performance, because of the wattage, this thing does get loud, we'll see. Let's go ahead and get a baseline reading. As you guys could see, where you're looking at about 37 Celsius there at the hottest spot. This thing has a really impressive cooling system and scooting over to our M1, 31 degrees Celsius. And remember, this has no cooling system. We used to have thermal pads in here. We did that mod that gave it a lot more performance, but we got rid of that. So this is in stock form. Look, it dropped down to 30. So definitely the M1 chip is very efficient. We'll see how these heat up in just a little bit. Now, I already ran this test for the review with it plugged in. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. And right off the bat, bam, we're hitting 45 watts. So it looks like instead of peaking at 55, it is limiting it down to 45. As far as clock speeds, wow, okay, that is a lot lower. 2,100, 2.2 gigahertz, that's crazy. That is a huge limitation. We're just running about a 65 degrees Celsius. That's way cool. Previously, it would just hit 97, 98 degrees right away, as you guys could see by this screenshot. Wow, guys, look at that. We're now sitting at 25 watts. So look at this. We have an hour and 34 minutes remaining as far as battery life when we're maxing out the CPU. Now, that is normal. I guess that's to be expected. But it's interesting because uh, this MacBook Pro, when you're doing heavy work like this, or the MacBook Air in this instance, it will still last for about three and a half hours compared to one and a half. So way better battery life. On the plus side, the fans, although they're on, they are much quieter than they were previously. Um, and that's because the temps are very low. We're under 70 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stop this. I'm gonna run it just one time to see the score and then we'll do it plugged in to look at the thermals. All right, look at that. That is actually surprising. We have a score of 8,833. Now that is lower than the full performance score, but over here with the M1, we have 6,776. Now the M1 Air, we get about a thousand less than the M1 Mac Mini that has a good fan. So definitely losing performance because of thermal throttling, but we're still getting better performance here, even though it was running at such a low clock speed, about 2.2, 2.3 gigahertz and 25 watts. So let's go ahead and plug this thing back in. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that 10 minute throttle test and we'll see how this thing heats up. Right off the bat, you guys may hear those fans spinning up. Uh, we do denoise de this audio, so I don't know how you'll hear it, but it is loud, it's significant. We're almost at 90 degrees Celsius right, right away, 55 watts. So even though these are 10 nanometers, they still suck a lot of power if you let them. Bam, it's at 94, 95 degrees Celsius now. And look at some of those cores, they're throttling down in order to get the system to cool down a bit. All right, so it's been just over five minutes. 
Uh, temps have settled in around 91, 92 degrees Celsius, 3 gigahertz. And look at the temps here. We're looking at 46, 47. And this is with fans exhausting everything. Now on the M1, we're looking at 40 degrees in one hot spot without a fan. So that is just getting heat soaked. The, the temps aren't really going anywhere. Uh, so definitely a lot hotter with this Intel processor just because it's more efficient doesn't mean it doesn't get hot. And on the top, I mean, you feel how dang hot it is. When I was benchmarking the system, um, I lifted it up the desk and the desk was super hot. It was crazy. Now, as far as max CPU performance with the MSI plugged in, it gets about 48% more performance than the M1 chip that is thermal throttled in the M1 MacBook Air. So that is a pretty significant difference. And now let's see how all this adds up in the real world. This is Lightroom Classic. It is very CPU intensive, and the Z16 is incredibly fast at Lightroom. One of the fastest machines. Switching between photos is super quick, even though I have tons of effects on these raw images. Faster than the M1, as you guys see, we have a little bit more of a delay here, uh, but that is at least on battery power. I've also exported some images here, and then it was insanely fast. A part of that's also the 32 gigabytes of memory, but I wanna see what happens when we end up unplugging it as well. So now, okay, look at that. It's still super quick. Of course, our single core performance did go down. Let's see how that compares to here. Still does seem a little bit faster or maybe similar. It did slow down a, a tiny bit before it was almost instant. Now, as far as brushes, it was also incredible. So I'm gonna go into the brush. I'll set it to adjust for exposure. And let's see if we get some lag like we do on the M1. So right there at the start, a little bit, but definitely better. So it still performs great on battery power. And now let's go ahead and export these images I already know that the Z16 is insanely fast plugged in. Let's see what it gets unplugged. All right, this is interesting. So it looks like as far as speed, they are close. Um, so the M1 is keeping up at this point, but the fans keep ramming up on this thing. That was probably my biggest complaint. Not only do they get loud if you have it plugged in, but now when we're doing real workload where we're working the graphics and we're working the CPU, the fans are just modulating up and down and up and down, even unplugged when we're using way less power, meaning way less heat. Oh wow, this thing is just shot out like an arrow. It was going slow at first, now it is just flying, about to finish this test where we are still waiting here on the M1. All right guys, this is impressive. The MacBook Air took three minutes and six seconds, which is great, especially for eight gigs of RAM. That is actually the limitation with this system. Maybe faster if it had 16. Now here we have 32 gigs of RAM, but this time we unplugged it. When we had it plugged in, it took a minute and 59 seconds. So just under two minutes, but unplugged, it took two minutes and one second. So for this task, it literally did not slow down being unplugged, which is amazing. That is fantastic. That is really, really good performance. Uh, but you guys let me know down below, is it worth spending a lot more having a much louder, much heavier machine to go from two minutes, you know, or from three minutes down to two minutes? I guess it maybe depends on how much you do this, but I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. Now next, let's go ahead and shut down Lightroom and we're gonna do a little bit of video editing. Now there is no doubt that the Z16 is the better video editing machine. It has that much more powerful RTX graphics card. Now here, they are both playing back this timeline perfectly. Let me go over here to the edit screen and the M1 for the money is insane as far as its performance. But the difference is how much overhead we have. So here, I have a couple LUTs applied, I have film grain. We're looking at 61 um, percent C GPU usage here, which they've actually optimized. That is really good. So you still have overhead for more effects. Whereas with the Z16 and that RTX graphics card, if we take a look at it, um, looks like we have 34, 40% usage. So uh, we have more overhead, but not as much as we expected. Now, one thing that's interesting is if we go ahead and plug this thing in, then we have more juice to the graphics card and then the usage should actually go down. So right there, you guys see, now we're only at 16% graphics usage with the same thing happening in the background. It's just more power gives it extra performance. So now we're looking at 16, 20% compared to 60. Now, both of these uh, graphics chips, 
Apple's and Nvidia's have really, really fast encoding. So when you're exporting a video, it is insanely fast, especially with H.265. So let's go ahead and export this. All right, wow, right off the bat, here we're looking at two minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, it's going up three minutes now. Here we have a minute and 10 seconds remaining. So this is where you start running into some throttling when the CPU is being used, the graphics is being used, and you don't have enough power. Okay, we're at four minutes now, so it's just slowing down. And if you guys can see that tiny number there, it's rendering at about 15 frames per second. Here we're at 86.5, 87. That's a massive difference. All right, guys, we're almost done here. Three, two, one. Bam, a minute and 24 seconds for a five minute project with effects, not in Final Cut, this is DaVinci Resolve, it's insanely fast now. Here, five minutes, 14 seconds remaining. So it's already been a minute and a half, and now it's starting to slowly go down, it leveled out. That's a massive difference. Uh, if you're video editing on the go, definitely the M1 Air kills it. And of course, it's way less expensive. Now, when we plug it in, it actually took a minute and 54 seconds. So it's still slower at exporting. But of course, you have more overhead if you have extra effects, if you have tougher footage. So I'm just gonna stop this. I'm not gonna wait. I mean, this is about a seven minute export here compared to a minute 24. And I'm not saying that the M1 Air is better for video editing. If you have it plugged in, you're doing heavier stuff, Yes, this machine is better. You have more graphics performance. But for most people, the kind of work that most people do, the M1 Air is just such an incredible value. And obviously, on the go, you're getting this killer performance uh, and way better battery life, cheaper, lighter weight. It's an awesome machine. Now, of course, me personally, I'm waiting for the M1X. That's what we want, and this is gonna be interesting. When we get that extra graphics performance, we get extra RAM availability. What will a comparison like this look like when you're looking at Intel's best about five years, six years late now for a full you know, 45 watt, 10 nanometer chip compared to Apple's um, you know, new M1X processor? That is gonna be incredible. So you guys let me know your thoughts. Um, hit that little subscribe button above. You guys can help us reach a million subscribers. We would love that. Check out one of those great videos over there. You guys can check out the review of this machine. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.